Hey everyone, um, we're going to talk today about a, a, a sort of interesting and small but very powerful thing called a factoid cluster. Um, and then we're going to talk about how factoid clusters, um, when put together in different combinations, form something that we call a data collage, which is a form of data visualization and, and infographic that really takes disparate facts and sort of like creates a visual structure that sometimes is more clustered and more of an arrangement of shapes and different things um, that but that can be very interesting but they're, they're very difficult to do but I'm gonna try it today to sort of you know teach you how to put together different factoid clusters um, to create these so just a quick bit of history here is long ago in the I don't know since when but Harper's magazine has always published this index and um, this is a fairly recent one um, within the last 10 years and what it has is all these sort of disparate facts put together but they have some sort of order to them in which they count down or at least they seem to be grouped by different um, sorts of things but it's just data and this was something that you know Harper's did uh, for years and it was just giving you this information so that is their data set from which you start a lot of times clients will approach you and say I have this data set of stuff right that has to do with my company or my product or my idea make them into something beautiful for me please and that's difficult to do because there may not be a logic here that you would expect from traditional visualization methods so but here are some examples these are what are called what I call data collage often called by the numbers infographics too um, and as you see you've got tons of information here right these were these were uh, probably handed to a designer on, in list format of just all this stuff, right? And they had to sort of come up with this interesting visual way to play. So um, the approach is typographic. We're seeing different weights of a, of a similar font. It's sans serif. There's multiple scales, um, thin and thick at play, black and white against this sort of very industrial utilitarian orange. So this is like a great way of sort of showing this thing that we're talking about, a by the numbers infographic or a data collage. Okay, so um, coming up with a structure is, is very interesting. Now, you can advance that and sort of see it in a creative way where someone has used um, either by hand or they've used the Tag Zito um, application, which you can find online. Tag Zito, it's Tuxedo, but instead of Tux, it's Tag. And you can um, make an image that is uh, black and white and then the software, when you load that image into it, will lay in text to that specific space and create this sort of image, right? Which is really a creative, um, you know, arrangement of all this type. But it is computer enhanced, unless this person um, may have done this by hand. I'm, I can't tell. Um, but that is a creative approach versus this sort of structured traditional approach. So then we can see something like this. Right. This is an infographic about the president. And as you can see, it too is a data collage. It's got tons of numbers here, all sorts of things. But at least we can see that through, um, uh, this has images too, but you can see that there's sections. Okay. So here's sort of like vitals. You can look at this and see all the numbers that have affected the president through his life. And it's very interesting. And they have illustration that sort of mesh as well. These are little spot illustrations and those sorts of things. Um, and those are great ways uh, to sort of pepper qualitative information, right, like actual images of things happening. Here in this case, these are press photos, so, you know, not something that every designer has access to, but the data um, you do have access. And here's another example, sort of using a little bit of style and color but just how social media marketing by the numbers, again, that same terminology, um, how do we arrange that information, right? A mixture of, of numbers, views, um, percentages here, uh, user numbers. I mean, it's crazy, you know, how four square check-ins. So this sort of information is, it's smashable, apparently. And here we can see who the designer is. And this graphic is, you know, really just a giant assembly of data points you know so making this interesting is difficult as I said so traditionally we've seen and here's something with a little bit more illustration how illustration can really help you do what you do but 
Today we're going to focus primarily on how the, um, the typographic setup of a factoid cluster really can sort of be, you know, done well. Okay, and then last but not least, um, just quickly the Harry Potter example. You can see all these different sort of Harry Potter factoids coming together. Very highly illustrated. It's got a little bit of a funky retro look. And there is, you know, all those different things. And they're illustrated. They're sort of meshed together in this very folk art way. And then this is an incredible infographic. I'm not sure who the creator of it is, but whoever it is, well done. It's been around for a while, but you can see this was um, somebody taking all of these factoid numbers and then making them into the shape of a skull when discussing death. So very, very strong metaphor and good use of, of sort of little pictogram illustration and, you know, good type, thin and thick, lots of great shape effects going on. So this is a pretty solid infographic, one I've admired for a long time. Okay, so let's make a, one of these clusters that I discussed. Okay, so if we said, um, let's make up a factoid here, uh, 500 Americans, let's see, 500 Americans um, are actively We'll have to check that spelling. Making infographics today. Okay, it's probably way more than that. Okay, let's say 2,500. Okay, so this is what text that would normally be formatted for something you know that you would use. So, for example, if we go back to this great example I showed before, so we've got where the text is sort of broken from one piece to another, one factoid piece to another. Okay, so if we were given a factoid like from the Harper's List, you know, we would have to maybe um, break that that way. So right now it says 2,500 Americans are actively making infographics today. If we wanted to break it apart, which is what we are going to do, by the way, um, you know, you can say amount of Americans, and you can adjust the copy so that it works well. But... Anyway, back to what I was saying before is this is the type area tool. Um, obviously, I want to use that because this type I need to have flexible. As you can see, it's not that right now. So by clicking and dragging, let's see here. Okay, so let's say American designers. are creating infographics. Okay, so we wanted to make this an a, a area type tool because that way we can shrink and expand the size of the box. Okay, we need this because we want to have the type um, wrapping, um, which is something that we need. One thing very important, we're going to go to type and then paragraph, and we're going to bring that in here. You may have that already set up in yours. I'm going to turn off hyphenation because when I change this, it's in the paragraph um, palette. If you don't have um, these extra options, you're going to need to go and then mine says hide. You, yours may look like this. Drop it down and show the options because you can undo hyphenation right there. Something that a student taught me and is awesome. So now you see that the type doesn't have hyphenation, which is great. Okay, so we're still going to grab the number and we're going to cut it, okay? And we're going to make the sentence its own box right now, okay? That's important, all right? Because what we're going to do is we're going to make the type its own box, and we're going to play with it a little bit. I want to talk right now about fonts with these sorts of things, okay? So right now I have Myriad Pro. That, sure, you can use Myriad Pro, but everybody else is too, you know? So try something unique. I find that what, what fonts really work for me really well in infographics are unique sans serifs. So like an entrance point for sans serifs could be Myriad or it could also be Helvetica. But I like to find things that are condensed. Okay, so I'm looking at this font right now that's called Open Sans. And then I have condensed light and condensed italic. And then this bold. Okay, so um, these are the two fonts that I'm just going to try and work with right now. Um, I like them because... Most infographics, especially these data collages, a lot of times they end up in skyscraper format, which is the big, long, tall infographic. 
and condensed fonts are much more readable at that size, which is generally about 600 pixels wide. All right, so two things, Open Sans and then Open Sans Condensed Bold. All right, those are the ones that we want to work with. So I'm going to choose the 2500, and I'm going to go to Open Sans Condensed Bold. And there we go. We have a nice bold font. Can we go even more? Nope, that's as bold as we can go. All right, now I got this font um, online. It's an open source font um, off of Font Squirrel. And you can download it. If you go to Font Squirrel and look for this, you'll see that it's there. And then to match, I'm going to make the um, sentence, American designers are creating infographics, open sans condensed light. Okay. All right, so that's a good combination of the same font but just different font styles um, to sort of create a factoid cluster. All right, so now here's our trick, okay? Now, with a, a, a sentence this small, you could get away with shrinking the type and having it sort of fit underneath the number, right, when it's at that size, okay? That can work. But you can also, let me just make a copy here. But if you didn't want to do that, you could open stuff up, let me make it a little bit bigger, I'm making it smaller and I need to be making it bigger. Um, let's just say on a daily basis, say we got a little bit cool, okay. So watch what we do now. I'm going to create an invisible box, okay. Now you can grab any piece of type and you can go up to where it now says um, object and then scroll down to where it says text wrap. Okay, this is if you were an old school Quark user like me, um, this was run around back in the day, and now it's called text wrap in Illustrator. So if we um, click make, what it's going to do is it's going to make an invisible box. Here we go. Text will wrap around all objects in the current selection, including type objects. Cool. Okay, so as you see, this type box now is responding to that shape, okay? And you can sort of see the invisible shape like that. All right, when you click on it now, you can see this is where it goes. So there's a, an even amount of space all around the whole um, object, okay? Which is good. You can go to where it says object and then text wrap. And now we can do text wrap options. And you can see a preview. And then you can change how close the type gets. Now, I think this is a great feature. It's limited, though, because we can't control which side, like we could in, say, CSS, with this type to, you know, have it feel balanced and look good. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually cake it off. We're going to go text wrap, release. Okay, and you see it rolls back on because, look, the space of this text area floats inside the space of the text. So what we're going to do is we're going to now get the rectangle tool and we're going to make a box that's like roughly the outline of that 2500 block right there. Okay, and you can see it's filled black. What we're going to do is we're just going to use this shape for its shapeliness, and we're going to um, get rid of the fill. So if I go and just click on now the fill uh, chip inside the tool palette and click none, there it's gone. Okay, so it's an invisible shape, but it's still a shape nonetheless. So what we're going to do, you can guess, is we're going to go to Object, text wrap, make on the shape, okay? So what happens now is the shape itself has the wrap applied to it, okay? All right, so we could go back now and mess with stuff inside of the text um, wrap options, but all I need to do here is watch, scale the shape slightly, and I have control over the above and below, which is a really a, a shortcoming of the tool, right? The text wrap tool. I think, you know, they could do better. So anyway, um, yeah, that is sort of how you can work with this now. So you can see that the this becomes a type cluster. It's got a large chunk of type here with type wrapped around it. All right. You can play with the box to get it to fit or reduce to three lines, those sorts of things. Okay. But if we had more copy, okay, and let's say a few more factoids. Let me get myself some dummy copy here real quick. Laura Mipsum. Okay. And let's say that this type was sort of full of 
these sorts of objects. Okay, well, here's what we can do. This is the ultimate in factoid clustering. Okay, so we can see now we've got the wrap, right, those sorts of things, another way to arrange it. All right, we could just, just for exhaustion's sake, we could take this and put it there, and we can make a sort of long version of that. Okay, it's another way to set up text. So you've got three ways. Oop. Move those as a unit. Okay, but here's what I'm, I'm going for for a larger point. Okay, there we go. We've got our, our text now. And let's say that this is 13 million. Okay, we're just going to insert sort of little factoids every so often. And pretend that these are things within, okay? So this is this is our our information here, okay? Now, I need to do what I had done before and make my own box that has a, a, a space ready for a factoid. So if I were to take this, break this out, right? That would disappear from that space. So really I should just start making them outside. Okay, this one has 13 million. Oop, it's a little too much million there. Okay. All right. What is my other one? 17. I don't know where that ratio came from. It's ridiculous, but oh. Okay. So same deal is going to happen here now. We're going to make a shape. Knock out its background. Go to text wrap make. We can take this shape and copy it as many times as we want and then have it fit to each one of our shapes and just make sure that you drag them together. Boom. Look at that. Okay. So depending on how this fits is going to depend on a few things. The shape of this box. Yeah. And the kerning and letting. So if I were to click on the box and then do Option, Down key, you'll see that can change the way how many lines line up against that particular factoid. Okay. Here's our box. There's the setup. And now we can just drag this in as well. Okay. And this, folks, is how we make our factoid clusters which then, as we said, ultimately can turn into projects like this. So good luck and happy data collaging.